here we go. Okay, attempt number two. <laughs> attempt number two to have this work. I, uh, I'm i really excited for you guys to meet my friend Delray, so I'm hoping that I see her pop on. I This is a new feature with Facebook. I am not the most tech-savvy person, um, and one of my favorite things is really to learn new things about technology because it's honestly kind of a struggle for me. So I'm really hoping that this time I can get it to work um, and I see and I see Delray pop on. So um, a little bit of an intro about these types of videos that I'm doing because they are different is I found I have so many amazing women in my life. I have so many inspirational people. I have um, amazing, amazing um, people that I just have met or have been introduced to or, um, you know, these are, oh yes, hi Kate, I know we're back. So I'm going to wait and see if I can see, um, I can share it with her in my phone. Thank you, Katie. Let me see if I see her on here. Um, when I see her pop up. So when I, um, when I see Delray pop up, I'll <laughs> see if I can invite her in. I don't know how, to, or, oh, how do I do this? Oh, oh, there's that. There's that thing. It says click to invite friends. So I invited, I invited her. Again, these are, these are like newer things. So this is a new Facebook feature um, where you can add somebody in with a Facebook Live. So yes, okay, there we go. And I, I just wanted to um, to meet my friend, Dr. Delray Messer. She's amazing. She has been an amazing, yes, it worked! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> She's been an amazing person in my life in the past, I, I think it's been over a year now. Um, but it's amazing because it's, she was one of those people that when I met her on Facebook originally, I was like, how do I not know her already? Like in person, we're from the same, or we went to school at the same school. We have hundreds of friends that are the same friends. How do we not know each other already? And when I got to talking with her, I was like, she, you know, she's like my spirit animal. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. Yay. So I wanted to, uh, for people who um, aren't following you or don't kind of watch what you do, because I find you really inspirational in a lot of ways. So I wanted to introduce you to uh, um, my tribe of people and have people really get to know you because I find so much inspiration from you every day. You're amazing. Thank you. Yay. Um, oh my God. And of course right now, cause I'm talking and I'm like excited that I got the video to work. My dog is like going to me. Yeah. So I have a whole list of questions that we're going to go Perfect. through. Perfect. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. So first off, oh my God, spot. Okay, so first off, I would love for you to tell your story a little bit. Um, just a little, like, background or, you know, on you and how you ended up where you are from where you were. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I'll try and make it as short as possible. I'm from North Dakota, small family. Um, my inspiration for chiropractic came from a family friend that was a chiropractor. Um, I was a track runner and cross-country runner, and he kept me super healthy um, while everybody else's body was breaking down, right, from tons of miles, and also inspired me to eat healthy. I had really great influence from parents as well as high school coaches that the fuel that I put in my body was like a car, right? So the higher premium fuel, the better it's going to run, and that's how I treated my body, and I felt a difference, and I knew a difference, and knew that I wanted to go into something with prevention and not treatment. Um, so I wanted to help people prevent what was going on out there instead of um, treating symptoms and covering them up with band-aids. So I chose to go to chiropractic school. My, my family was super excited and everything had really gone well in my life for a long time. And I had not had a ton of huge obstacles, but my little munchkin, McKenna, um, I found out I was pregnant with her when I was accepted to chiropractic school. So it was one of those things where it's forks in the road, right? You either take one way and probably don't go to school um, because having a child is not easy. Um, but I chose to continue with what I wanted to do and pursue my passion and started school when she was three months old. So it was by far... Ooh. I've ever done. Um, it was the first time I really doubted myself, but I got a book in the mail called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, and it taught me success principles. In fact, I have several of the paintings hanging up around my room. This one actually reminds me of me a lot. It's called Applied Faith, and it's this girl walking a tightrope um, with her hands out, 
and faith was just a huge part of my purpose and the definiteness of purpose. That one is a compass. So it just um, mm. really, w I wake up to that in the morning because your purpose is what drives you and moves you forward, even through really crappy days. Um, and faith is really the underlying reason why um, I've continued to pursue what I love, even through lots of obstacles and challenges. Um, mm. So became a chiropractor, practice, but really... Um, wanted to impact more lives through nutrition. So I created my own nutraceutical line. <laughs> <laughs> I was really passionate about freeing up my time to be able to spend more time with my girls and travel and speak around the world because it's what I love. I love to travel and I love uh, meeting new people and I love speaking. So I thought having my own nutraceutical line and really diving into weight loss and hormones, which is what we connect about Beth all the time. Um, and Beth is obviously an incredible speaker and author now on women's hormones. Um, and knowing how toxicity and chemicals affect our hormones, not only our health, mm -hmm. but also our weight. So when I started learning this research and how people are still following a calories in versus calories out diet that they've been told for the last 30 years, um, and it's not working anymore. There's a lot of frustrated people when it comes to weight and weight loss resistance. So I got passionate about that and um, unfortunately learned about an industry that was supposed to be about helping people and instead was putting fillers um, in products for profit margin reasons. And being from a farm integrity is my number one value. I don't care what I do on this planet. If it doesn't have integrity behind it, I'm not going to be able to sleep at night. Um, so I hit rock bottom two and a half years ago, and I met you about a year into my journey after my life completely changed. I was open finally to a different way of doing things um, and decided to partner with a company that was high integrity, um, had incredible products. Uh, that matched my values for integrity ingredients and really what we love to talk about, which is cellular cleansing, um, adaptation, yes. stress, um, vitamin and mineral deficiencies. So all the geeky science stuff that I love, <laughs> I now get to share with people on a day-to-day -day basis, which is awesome. So yes. amazing. I love this. So normally when I, I like to ask people what, um, like what their big mission is, but I would say you, you kind of covered that in your, I want to say one of the things I love about you is you live your mission every day. You put it out there. You, that's your lifestyle. That's what you do. And that's what you help people do. Right. Absolutely. I love it. Yes. Yes. Um, so I would say, I want to know what, what you see all the time. Like what are common myths um, with people or questions, the most common myths or questions that you get from people all the time? Constantly calories in, calories out. Just decrease your calories, increase your caloric expenditure with exercise and you're supposed to lose weight. Oof. <laughs> um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that will not work anymore for most people. And the reason why is because calories matter. 100 calories of an Oreo snack pack is much different than <laughs> almonds and you know I say that jokingly but in all seriousness we have such an issue with what people are eating and when they're eating it so nutritional timing um nutrition is so confusing now for so many people because it's become yeah. an industry that's a billion dollar industry so trickery is being to show, you know, try and convince consumers that, you know, 100% vitamin C lemonade is actually good for our kids when it's packed full of 100 grams of sugar, you know, in just a couple of servings. So people are, are uh, it's unfortunate, but this is happening and it peeves me. So I want to part of the solution because I can't handle what's going on with the calories in versus calories out myth. And unfortunately, not a lot of healthcare professionals have been educated in nutrition. Um, I mean, you go to the diabetes website and there's deli meat that's suggested and there's sugar laden products, um, you know, that are suggested for people's diets. And I just don't think it's okay anymore. No wonder we have one of the sickest countries on the planet and now the sickest generation of kids. So one of the first generations 
kids that will not outlive their parents because of lifestyle related diseases that could have prevent, been prevented with diet change, exercise change, and understanding how chemicals affect us at a cellular level, how calories matter, the type of calories. So instead of counting our calories, it's really how do we include more whole food nutrition into our diets, and more importantly, nutrition that complements our crazy, busy lifestyle. I don't know anyone that can be Rachel Ray or and make, you know, homemade gourmet meals. Let me tell you, if I get out of the house without yogurt on my pants, I'm celebrating, <laughs> you know, once having my daughter. And that was huge for me because I was one end of the spectrum. I would look at people and be like, come on, like you can't prep your meals. And then my daughter was born and I was like, oh my gosh, this is just <laughs> happening. I can't eat turkey and broccoli out of a Tupperware at my daughter's softball game when it's 85 degrees in the summer. You know, like you can do that, but it's impossible, especially when you have kids. So I needed something that was high integrity, complemented my whole food lifestyle and address nutritional deficiencies, but was the right type of macros for my body to light up with energy and mental clarity. Yes. So what would be the number one thing that you think is holding somebody back? Like when I know you chat with a lot of people, you do, um, you do a lot of talks. You are, you speak kind of all over the country, which is amazing sharing this mission and message with everybody. And what would be one of the number one things that you find people doing that they're, or they, they're either not aware of, or they're afraid to start doing just to make these changes in their life? I think it's lack of convenience. I don't think anybody chooses um, mm -hmm. poor mm -hmm. nutrition habits because they know better. I talk to people every day. They're like, I know what I'm supposed to do. It's not like we're uneducated when it comes. I mean, there's, there's information overload, in fact. You know, you Google a nutrition plan or exercise plan. It's all there. So we have more self-help books that are sold in the U.S. than any other country on the planet, yet we're one of the sickest countries. So we have information. We're not lacking information. We're lacking action and implementation yeah. because people think it's complicated to change your diet. Um, mm -hmm. When in fact, it's actually very simple when you have the right solutions and tools to be able to implement it. It also has to taste good. It's got to be something that's at your fingertips. You know, I used to spend so much time prepping meals, and now I can spend that time with my daughters and doing things that I absolutely love and fulfilling my purpose on this planet. And things have been more convenient and easy for me now than ever before. And that's really what I want to teach people, that it does not have to be complicated. So what I hear most is I know what to do. I just don't do it, which is why 98% of research for long, 98% of long-term transformation of any kind, whether it's mindset, implementation of a healthy lifestyle and habits has to do with accountability and support. And most Ooh. people lack mm. that. Most people are now paying for things that aren't necessarily product driven, but they're going to a place where they can be positively influenced, positively inspired. They can be held accountable. They can have support. They can get tips and recipes. Ooh. They can figure out that and relate to people that do not have all the time in the world to be one end of the spectrum, right? So, so much of the information is confusing and contradicting. How do you know what to follow? Exactly, Kathleen. Yeah. I great, great agree. question. <laughs> what are some of the things that you say to, to that, Beth? Um, well, I always tell people to try something, you know, just give it a try because you never know what's going to be the right fit for your body. And I find people... Uh, most of the time, most of the women that I work with, they're in a, what I call like a crisis mode of some kind. Like they're not just like, oh, I feel pretty good, but you know, maybe I could improve a little bit here or there. It's like, I'm a hot mess express or I really, I'm needing something right now because I feel like my body's falling apart. And um, what they are doing, you know, what you have to do is sort of jump in, but it's, it's not that you have to keep doing that forever just to get you out of that hole that you're in to move in the right direction of better health. It gets easier from there on out. So. Absolutely. I I, I, and I here. always love resets. 
and we, you know, chat about like cellular cleansing and resetting your body. Most importantly, because most people are living in a brain fog. I was struggling with my energy um, and frustrated mm -hmm. with that for a very long time. I was eating a perfect diet. I was exercising. I was looking at the type of calories I was consuming. Um, but stress is something that I don't think necessarily ever goes away in our life. We are... Mm -hmm able to adapt to it and handle it when our body's functioning optimally. So when I realized that no matter what I did for a whole food healthy diet, I was still going to be nutrient deficient because of the way our soil is being turned over and stress yeah. levels were there and toxicity, I cannot live in a bubble. Uh, most of us can't live in a bubble or control what we're exposed to. There's 80,000 chemicals in the United States right now, and less than 1% have ever been tested for safety of any kind. If you want a really good book about this, Slow Death by Rubber Duck is one of the best books that I've read when it comes to really understanding, yes, really understanding that our indoor environment is seven to 10 times more toxic than our outdoor environment. So the rubber ducks, the, 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 the purpose of the book was to share that things that you don't even think of, personal care products, household cleaners, what your children bathe in, um, uh, some of these plastic toys from China that contain lead and mercury that leach into the hot water um, that they are in, is a big deal for chemical exposure. Most people think, okay, pesticides, herbicides on food, the type of water that we drink. I thought of chemicals and, and toxicity, and I thought of smokestacks and car exhaust, right? So you think smog and LA, that's, you know, toxicity. When it's not, our bodies are like a bathtub or a bucket filling up with water, and it's only a time, matter of time before it overflows. Our body does an incredible job of protecting us from toxicity by storing toxins in our fat cells. And that has been proven with research. That's not Dr. Delray's research. That is like well-known research that our body houses toxins. In fact, the umbilical cord blood of mom shows 232 different chemicals that get passed to baby now. It's no wonder we start children with learning behavioral mm -hmm. issues. All of these food intolerances, food allergies, the allergies children have that are severe and life-threatening. This did not happen. I asked people that are sitting in the crowd when I do talks about this that are in their 50s, 60s, or 70s. I go, when you were a child, did you know another child with a peanut allergy? Did the teacher have fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome? And they look at me cross-eyed like, no, none of this did. And our bodies don't just like, break down. Epigenetics is the way our genes are expressed. Our lifestyle is what affects epigenetics. You either have the control to turn the light switch on or off. You're given a light switch by your family, but no longer are you a victim to chronic disease just because your family history has it. You have control now to be able to switch that and change it. Not only for you, what's crazy is genetics actually form in the womb. So babies are given this exposure and expression of genes. They're not given necessarily heart disease. They're given the fact that you made choices that are now going to affect them more when they're in the exposure. It's huge. We so much control yes. over chronic disease, more than we can imagine. Yes. Oh, oh my God. I'm so fired up right now. <laughs> so there is, I want to say so much content, so much amazing information that um, you just dropped. So I had to write some of these things down so that people, you know, because sometimes uh, otherwise people are going to be rewatching this and like taking notes like me. I love it. Um, one of the other questions that I wanted to ask you just is, um, just as, uh, just cause I'm curious is that, cause I know every day is a, like a new day to start over and things like that. What's one of your things that you struggle with every day? So even though you are a wealth of knowledge, you know, all the things, and that's one of the things you said, like, yeah, I know enough, but I'm just not doing it. Or what's one of the things that you struggle with every day? Well, I strive to be consistent um, and I strive to be organized um, because it's not natural for me to be organized. 
um, or prioritize my day. So I find a lot of people let their day run them rather than them running their day. Once I started mastering my time and getting done in an hour, what used to take me six hours, um, it freed my life in so many ways. We don't have time. We don't have time to work out. We don't have time to mm -hmm. eat healthy. Um, we have a lot of excuses, but all that means is it's not a priority. So in fact, if you change your language, and I just spoke at the chiropractic school yesterday to some students in the class, thanks to you, Beth, for the referral. Um, and we talked about that. I said, instead of saying you don't have time, actually switch your verbiage and say, this is not a priority to me. It will make you think twice about what you're saying. So instead of saying, I don't have time to work out, say, it's not a priority for me to work out. Or it's not a priority for me to move my body and treat my body well. It will start to change the verbiage. Words are so powerful. So for me, the biggest struggle I've ever had is mastering my days and my time. Mm -hmm. So now I say I make it a priority to design my days. I make it a priority to prioritize my time, to time block, to get that done on Sunday evening, to look at my calendar the, more, the night before. And because I now, how many of us, Ask yourselves this, how many of us spend time with people that we love, but we're not present? How many times do we go and work out, but we're not present? Or what we put in our mouth is subconscious versus a conscious choice and being mm -hmm. present. So those are the things that I'm really passionate about is take, having people take a step back and, and live a present life to make choices that not only affect them today, but also 20 years down the road, the most precious commodity that we have is time. It's not anything yeah. that we physically touch on this planet. It is our time with those that we love the most. And what people are missing out on right now is time. Their time is being cut shorter and shorter. The quality of life yeah. that children are living is less than they deserve because of choices that they're making now, but are being instilled upon them by role, supposed, supposed to be role models of parents. It's not what we say, but what we do that they follow. And I want more people living quality lives with time and life experiences with people that they love the most. And it's too often that we put that off because we're too busy because it's not a priority until something mm -hmm. horrible happens. And Beth, you know this, statistically, people, the first sign of a heart attack for over 60% of people is death. It's a big That's deal. It? It's a big deal. So that, yes. that, you know, is something I'm passionate about because people wait far too long to make a change. It, it really is crazy that once someone's diagnosed with cancer or heart disease, they say, okay, I got to make a change. That's been developing for 10 or 20 years before it happens. You know, so it's when is it actually, a, when, when is this choice made? I feel it made when we don't feel well. When you don't feel well, you can't positively influence others. You can't go play at the park mm -hmm. and be proud of your kids. You can't be a happy spouse. You can't be a productive worker. So the time to change is yeah. now. What's so cool is we have that ability to make a choice right now. It just has to be important enough. Yes. And yes. last thing, this is what pains me the most, is big food and big pharma doesn't want you to change. So please continue doing what you're doing to fund and fuel what's going on in our country. It is Sixing the amount of medications that we're on, and there's a time and a place for everything. I'm not one end of the spectrum to say that you never, ever need a medication for something. Like, that's there for incredible emergency purposes, things that we can't control. But for chronic lifestyle-related diseases, continually funding mm -hmm. big pharma and big food is what they want. There are food yeah. scientists that put together the perfect combination of food to keep you addicted to fast food and foods that are unhealthy. And that's what you're funding. So instead, fund your future and make different choices. Yes. Oh, my God. So amazing. So, so, so amazing. Um, so you have, throughout your career, you know, kind of 
done a lot of different things. You worked in an office as a chiropractor, then you started your own nutraceutical line. And then now you are, I think I would call you like a daily inspiration leader. <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my personal title for you, I think. Um, but in terms of this transition and everything else that you've made in your life, how has that affected, you know, your life and, and you know, like these career transitions? Because that's not an easy thing to do. That's something that I did a couple of years ago. And it was, I mean, I didn't think it would be that hard, but it's super hard. And you've done it like three times now. And how has that affected you and your girls? Because you have two girls. Yeah. Well, let me tell you what I was before. I was prideful. I was full of ego because I thought I knew everything. I um, was attached to what other people thought. I didn't. Ever, I didn't ever want to fail. And now I invite all of those things. I've crushed ego and pride because two and a half years ago, when I hit rock bottom and had nothing, I lived with a friend for a while. I had literally next to nothing for money. I lost my purpose and passion because I saw this industry that was lying to consumers. I All I wanted to do was help the most amount of people possible and inspire them to live a life on fire versus just a comfortably mediocre, miserable life. And that's what I see people doing, like a temperate life, not a life on fire with passion and purpose to inspire and impact yeah. That's all I wanted, but I didn't have the vehicle to be able to do that. And it took me hitting rock bottom to be open because I believe I was humbled and God put me in a place that said, okay, miss, this is not about you. I am going to give you lots of signs and I am going to open you up to something that you would have never said yes to before because you thought you knew everything. And I would have never been open had it not been for that place. So now I'm in... Mm -hmm. Base that's literally evolving into what I believe most businesses and companies will do and how they will distribute products and services to people. In fact, I rode in an Uber last night and had a conversation with the driver asking him, was this your full-time job? He's like, no, I'm in transition, but it's perfect because I can turn my car on when I want, off when I want, make an income. We look at companies like this. They're literally going to put out the business of taxi cabs, right? They're taking over yeah. space because it's a more efficient model. Look at retail spaces. Look at some of the retail stores that are closing that you would have <sighs> never thought. Gander Mountain. And Gander Mountain in Minneapolis, all closing. Gander Mountain's closing, and I'm shocked. I was shocked when I saw that. I'm not anymore because retail <sighs> is going to change. Everything is going online. That is the space. Mm -hmm that products are going to be moved through and whether yeah. people like it or not, that's what's changing. Now there's nothing wrong with services um, and retail stores where people still want to go um, and get things done. I mean, I have a great friend. She's been on here, Katie Blanchard. She loves what she does. She's a salon owner with toxin free um, salon services and hair care. And I love that, you know, I'm not going to be able to shop online and get that. So we need spaces <laughs> like that open. Um, but for the majority of shopping needs, a lot of things can be done online and shipped to your doorstep. It's more convenient. There's less overhead for a business. <laughs> Higher quality products can happen when you don't pay a retail store 70%, 80% of your profit margin just to be on the shelf. And I know this because I was in nutraceuticals before. Yeah. Yes. Talk on this more. Yes. Talk on this more because I get this question a lot when I do talks. I do a lot of talks in gyms or fitness centers, just educating about health in general. And people always ask about stuff on shelves. And I say, well, to get it on the shelf, it goes through a lot of stuff to get there. Right. So talk more about that piece of it. Yeah, so I actually talked to a lot of retail spaces um, about my protein powder and putting it on a shelf. And it was grass-fed, hormone-free, antibiotic-free whey, undenatured protein. It was incredible um, with incredible branch chain amino acids. And I was so proud of it. And I thought, oh, my gosh, which retail store isn't going to want to have this on their shelf? All of them because there wasn't enough profit margin. So I literally was told to go back to the drawing board and put soy and artificial sweeteners and even fillers 
in the product to make sure that I made enough money and they made enough money. And to me, anything that's in manufacturing and mass production in retail is going to devalue the quality of the ingredients because there has Mm -hmm. to be profit margin somewhere. So that's why uh, a word of mouth marketing model, network marketing, word of mouth, an Uber like model is so attractive because it allows the, the quality of the product to stay in the product and it moves through people and more and more people are looking for freedom in their life, not only physically and emotionally to find a culture of positivity and support, but financially for a family to be able to afford incredible nutrition, to create a little bit of breathing room financially. A most, mm-hmm. most incredible entrepreneurs, we have Warren Buffett, Robert Kiyosaki, incredible people that have been in business that share the new evolved 21st century business will involve people that add to their stream of income right now because job security is at an all time low. People are frustrated with not having security in their plan B or retirement and people are now looking for opportunities to feel more financially secure. And it's a part of this that I never thought I would be passionate about. And now I will literally stand on a mountain and share that I didn't have a plan B a couple of years ago, let alone a plan A. Living paycheck, (laughs) dressed out, $100,000 in student loan debt, and two Mm -hmm. girls relying on me to provide and myself is not a place that I ever wanted to be again. I would log into my bank account and feel sick to my stomach. I would wonder what's going to happen next month. What's going to happen next month. And I could no longer live that way. And a lot of people ask me like, what did you do to, to turn on the passion and hunger to make that change in your life financially? Cause I grew up humbly and I still, I'm extremely humble and will always keep that at the forefront of what I do because I believe abundance has everything to do with contribution and service to others. You do not put the planet healthy or and happy with the, the nicest car, right? You don't leave this planet with your nicest house, you know, in your grave with you. I know who is going to remember the influence that I had on their life when I leave this planet. That is what matters to me is positive influence that people were able to live an incredibly free life because they saw an opportunity in a different way. And that's what I saw two and a half years ago, an opportunity in a different way to create a legacy for my girls. And there is nothing wrong with nice things. That is something that I am extremely passionate about people work very hard for what they have and deserve every last ounce of it however if it's tied to that and only that is when I see people still have all the money in the world but they are um, early of heart disease because of stress that's associated with it that is when we live lives when we try to keep up with the Joneses that's not fulfilled and happy so that's what I really challenge people to say is is what you have bringing happiness and fulfillment or is it Mm. stressful to continue to try and have that Ooh, such an important message such an important message oh my god so in this entire video I feel like we have covered so much great information so much great content so if you are catching just bits and pieces of it Go back and listen to the entire thing. Your your mind is going to be blown about at least six times. At least six six times. That's that's what I'm thinking. Um, so there's one more question that I have for you, Delray. But before I ask you the last question, I want you to let people know where they can find you, where you appear most. Um, because again, all the knowledge bombs you dropped, I know people are going to be like, "Oh my god, I want more of this lady." <laughs> so where's well, the best place to right follow here? You? Facebook, you're probably going to tag me in this video. You know what's so cool is my overhead in a brick and mortar business was outrageous. Tens of thousands of dollars. Then in an online business, tens of thousands of dollars. And then in now the evolved economy in the virtual space, the Uber of nutrition, I don't have a website that I pay for. I don't have employees, I don't have overhead besides what I eat. Um, and literally, that is what's so amazing is I've spent zero, zero dollars 
in marketing costs. I don't even do Facebook boosted ads. I don't plan the videos. I want to show can truly be authentic, share a lifestyle and connect with those people that are ready to transform their lives emotionally, physically, or financially. And so you can find me yes. on Facebook <laughs> and social media. Perfect. 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 Okay. And then last. You ready for it? you know. And I actually did a Facebook live on it just a day ago because I want to show people that it took me a year to learn how to do that. But for some reason, I wanted to know how. So I actually did a Facebook live on farm girl whistles and French braids. And it has everything to do with whether you're interested or committed to change. If you're interested, you're only going to do things when you feel like it. And likely change isn't going to happen. Commitment is doing the thing you said you were going to do long after the mood has left you. I do things mm -hmm. even when I don't feel like it. And that's commitment because I'm leaving a yeah. legacy to my girls, a role model. I work out even when I don't want to. I eat healthy even when I don't want to. I commit to helping other people, working earlier hours and later nights because I'm committed to helping them, not interested. So that's a huge difference. And people that I see that transform their life, they're hungry to change an emotional pain point that drives them past fear, self-doubt, and other people's opinions. When you're purpose-driven, none of that matters. Mm. You're laser-like mm. focused on what you want. Yes. Oh, I love this. I love this, love this, love this. Yes. Okay. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Delray. This is, I'm going to say, the first of probably other <laughs> videos that we're going to do together because um, this was amazing. And I know we've gotten a lot of great comments, things like that. Again, if you're not following Delray, <clears throat> follow her on Facebook um, is where I see the most of your stuff. But you're on Instagram too, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So much great content here. Um, go back and check out her other videos because you're going to get so much value out of the information that she puts out there. I mean, it's just, it's free knowledge, free knowledge from experience and from, like you said, $200,000 of student loans of information that's all locked up here that she just pours out all the time. So thank you so much for all this great info. Um, and if you guys still have questions, you can kind of comment below and we'll make sure to share this everywhere so everybody gets to see it because it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much and everybody have a great rest of your day. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Beth.